in Gordon, Gordon the Bongo, uh, the Mazda Bongo, um, we have a rear view mirror. But as you can see in that rear view mirror, you can't really see an awful lot because when you look in the back, you've got a rib bed that's really, really high. And then behind the rib bed, you've got a load of cushions that are stored behind there. So looking out the rear view mirror, you can't look out the back window because it's blocked completely. So uh, we have a bit of an issue. We've still got side mirrors. Side mirrors still work great, uh, but rear view mirror, might as well forget about it uh, because you're not going to be able to see anything out of it. Uh, but what we do have is we have this, uh, which is um, a Garmin SatNav. Now this is a Garmin uh, Drive Smart 61. Um, it's a 6.1 inch screen, uh, really bright. Um, however, the Garmin is very, very good um, at what it does, uh, which is a sat -nav. However, it also connects to the mobile phone. So we have a uh, Bluetooth uh, connection to the mobile phone. So if we get any calls or text messages, they come up on the screen. Um, it's got all the usual stuff. It's navigation and it's, it, it looks nice and clear. However, more importantly, um, what you will find now is uh, we have kind of solved the problem of not being able to see what's behind us uh, when reversing. We do have reversing parking sensors, uh, so we know when we're getting close to things. However, we don't know if there's like an obstacle that, we're, that the sensors are not picking up. However, we have this little button here um, because we've now bought um, the wireless Bluetooth camera. Now, it's not the best picture in the world, it's Bluetooth, so there's no wires between the, the sat-nav at the front and the camera at the back. Um, and the pictures, like I say, it's not the best. They reckon it's 720p. I very much doubt that that's 720p. Um, however, uh, it does show you everything that's behind you. Um, and once you turn it on, it knows when you're reversing. It has a movement sensor in the actual camera itself. Um, so the camera will stay on as long as you're moving backwards. As soon as you start to move forwards, the camera will turn off um, and it goes back into sat-nav mode. However, what we have realised is that if you're driving along um, and you're actually in the map view, you still have down this bottom corner the button for the camera. So you can click on that button at any point while you're driving and you can actually use it as a rear view camera. Now this is the camera on the back. It's mounted onto the bike rack at the minute because it's the best place to put the camera. Um, however, um, the bike rack's gonna be used very, very shortly. Uh, we're gonna drop the bike rack down. And when we drop the bike rack down, um, I've got a bracket that we change it to. Now the camera itself is a Garmin BC40. It's wireless reversing camera. Um, currently, um, you can buy it from Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below. And it's currently £129.95p, which is quite expensive. However, when you look at it from a view of it doesn't have any wires that connect the front to the back, it runs off just two AA batteries, which I'll show you shortly. Um, I, think it, I think it was well worth the investment. So, turn the camera on. Now I find this really good because obviously the camera is right at the rear on the bike rack and we have children that play on scooters and bikes on the estate so I can actually see if there's any kids in the camera before I actually reverse any further. Now like I say it does have a sensor in it um, that will turn the camera off however if you don't turn the camera off, it turns off after a period anyway. 
um, I think the period is um, probably a minute or so but as you can see it, it does well keeping up as a reversing camera now that's the camera in the rear view mirror mode um, and I, I think for a Bluetooth connection I think that's um, going really really well now when obviously because it's detecting that I'm driving forward it doesn't stay on for as long however it's long enough for you to see if there's anyone in your blind spot or if there's anyone really really close to you behind while you're driving so I'm just going to reverse into where I started from my parking space so, as you can see the camera's on and because it knows I'm going in reverse because of the sensor that's in the camera it stays on until I either drive forwards or I turn the camera off and you can hear the reverse buzzer uh, and when I get closer to the fence um, in the parking space you'll also hear the um, the parking sensors kick in There you go. It's dead easy to remove because all you do is literally undo them clips and it just comes off. So you've got the sat nav, well, the actual camera itself, uh, which is good in the dark as well as the day. Um, picture quality, like you've seen, is okay. Um, there you go, you see the model number, Carmen BC40. You can also see the symbols for the AA batteries. There's one battery, goes in each corner, each end, um, and it tells you which way around to put the batteries in. And the easiest way of doing it is you pop that and then the battery goes in. And then when you put it back on, um, there's, a, there's a rubber seal on it, so it stops any moisture getting into it. Now, there you go, you can see the, the seal there it's a little rubber seal and then all you do when you want to put it back is literally all you do is push it down so that the seal makes and then click it and that's it it's in and then the camera you see the blue light flashing because it's connecting to the sat nav at the front and then all you do is put it in there and put it in there so i'm guessing overnight which is what I do overnight. I just unclip it, take it out, leave it in the van, or put it in the house for safekeeping. That way it doesn't get broken. The bracket itself stays on the actual van itself. Now, if you can see the two screws, there's one there and there's one there. When you adjust the, when you undo them, it adjusts the tilt angle of the actual sat nav of the the camera itself so it adjusts the tilt angle of the camera uh, the only problem that I found with this is that obviously with the camera fitted uh, the camera's there but it's on the bike rack now at the moment the bike rack's not being used however when the bike rack is being used and it comes down the camera is now pointing directly down so that's no use so what i've done is uh, because of where i work i've actually had one of these made uh, completely well over engineered um, you could just use a piece of angled aluminium available from b&q um, but all this will do now is that the camera will mount onto this front plate and that will mount to the bike rack like so so then the camera's pointing in the right direction um, the bike rack is going to be down nearly all the time uh, because you'll see in the next video um, that what we do with the bike rack is we actually fit a box to the back 
um, a massive Thule storage box. So what I'll do is I'll change this bracket over and you can watch how, how I do it. Now, as you can see, the bracket's now fitted. So all I'll do now is take these two screws out, uh, that one and that one, uh, and then I'll fit the bracket onto there um, so that the camera can mount back onto it. Now, what you'll notice is now I'll put the bracket onto um, the, the bike rack and then I've mounted the Garmin holder onto there. Um, you'll notice the Garmin sign is spelt the right way up because when you bring the bike rack down um, that's the way that it needs to be up. Uh, the only other piece that needs to go on it now is the top piece which is this which does have the Garmin sign on it as well but if you notice the screws slide up and down and the idea behind that is that you screw this on and then you adjust the angle of this you adjust the angle to get it right for how you want it this is with the bike rack down um, and that's the camera mounted so as you can see it's got the bracket on it there and then it's got the Garmin on it there now the two screws in that second plate are still loose so what you can do now is you can adjust it to where you want the camera to be so because i want it as a reversing camera as well as a rear view camera i'm going to leave it probably about there because i've got parking sensors on the van already um, so that'll tell me when i'm really close however i want to be able to see behind me so i'm going to leave it there and now i'm going to just going to nip in the van and check that it's at the right angle so we're now back in the van and we'll fire the sat nav up agree to it and do that like i say it takes a couple of seconds for it to fire in um, but that is now showing me the back of the van and i think that's bang on i think that's the best angle right so we know you press that button and the camera comes on um, however there are some settings that you can adjust in the actual camera itself so if you click on that you can flip the video so if you put the camera on upside down or in fact mirror image mirror video and then save then go back all it's done is flip the image over so what was on the left is now on the right and what was on the right is now on the left uh, guidance lines now you can either have the guides on or the guides off now what you mean by the guidelines is these lines here so if you decide to turn those off and go back you just have a camera view nothing else now i like to keep them on um, because it's handy to have but you can adjust the guidelines so what it means is you've got buttons that enable you to move the guidelines wherever you want them you can also move that front one up you can bring it down you can move the front one up bring that down same again you can adjust that line in uh, what you can also do is restore all the factory settings uh, you can rename it so if you add more than one of these if you add one fitted to the front of the van and one fitted to the rear of the van or even side to side you can have more than one um, and you can unpair and that's pretty much 
automatic activation. You can have this on startup, so as soon as you turn the van on, and as soon as the sat nav kicks in, uh, it automatically displays the camera. So if you always drive into your space and you have to reverse out, it's handy to have. You just turn it on and you can always flick. Um, as soon as the camera's on, you can always press the return button and it takes you straight back to where you are. Um, that reversing camera has been on the van now for probably uh, three months now. Um, and it's still on the original batteries. Now they do say that the batteries will last probably uh, three to four months. Um, the one thing that it doesn't do is it doesn't have a battery indicator. Um, but I'm guessing it all depends on how often you actually use the camera. Now, if you're constantly turning the camera on, I'm guessing it will drain the batteries a lot quicker. Um, however, we use the camera for reversing. And like I say, if we think that there's something in our blind spot, then we will turn the camera on. But apart from that, um, the camera just sits on the back and doesn't really go anywhere. Um, so overall, would I buy it again? Yes, I would. Um, hope you like the video. If you do like the video, click the like button. Um, and if you want to see more videos on bongos and accessories for bongos and, and anything to do with camper vans, um, please subscribe.